childhood asthma and other acute and chronic respiratory problems uh, that children living in the greater Waterbury area have and beyond. Reducing emissions will also decrease the risk of cancer, cardiovascular damage, premature death, and developmental and reproductive harm, which will keep all of our families safe. So that's why it's critical that we pass this legislation so we can build healthier and safer communities for our children and for our future generations. And I think there are uh, two themes that you're going to hear today. Um, the first is that the TCI initiative is an economic, environmental, public health, and equity imperative. So you will hear that reiterated by many of our speakers. And you will also hear that TCI will position Connecticut to be a recipient of federal funding because the Biden administration has focused its transportation initiatives uh, and infrastructure initiatives with a huge equity focus which TCI embodies. So with that, it is my great pleasure to introduce um, a leader who has been a great friend to our administration and a wonderful partner uh, with us in government, Mayor Neil O'Leary. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. If I knew we were going to have a crowd like this, Governor, I would have had a couple food trucks out here. We could have made a day of it. It's really a pleasure to see all of you here this morning. Of course, it's an honor to be here today with our Governor Ned Lamont and our Lieutenant Governor Susan Beisowitz, as well as our Commissioner of Transportation, Joe Giletti, and our Commissioner of Deep, Katie Dykes. And of course, all of our legislative delegation. Uh, Senator Hartley is here. I don't think I've seen her since March last year, and I'm happy that she's here with us today. Uh, Joan's uh, efforts uh, in the, um, in the re revitalization of this train station. Uh, quite frankly, uh, it was about a nine and a half year project, and we're honored to be here today with all of you, and certainly um, thankful uh, with the state of Connecticut's commitment, not only to this train station revitalization, but to the rail line from here to Bridgeport. Before I, like to, before I actually proceed further, I'd like to just take a brief moment to really thank Governor Lamont and Chief Commissioner Gillette for all the support that they've given the city of Waterbury, but particularly in the rail line, which we feel is the key to the future, not only for the city of Waterbury and the Valley, but honestly, for the commerce and other reasons here in the state of Connecticut. And with the rail line improvements, not only can we do passenger trains now, in a, a very short period of time, we'll be able to do freight trains as well, which is key for this city. The Waterbury Rail Line has been and remains one of the highest priorities for this city and for communities across the Naugatuck Valley. I have been fortunate to serve as chairman of the Naugatuck Valley Council of Governments since 2014. Our COC has 19 member towns. Our focus is simple, and that is what can we do as a region, as a region, to improve the lives of our residents and our economic development efforts here in the state of Connecticut. The Waterbury Rail Line represents a critical link to Lower Fairfield County in Manhattan with well over a thousand people traveling to and from on a daily basis. Something important to note is that during December of 2020, uh, of course in the height of COVID, uh, the New Haven uh, Rail Line ridership levels dropped about 83 uh, percent because of COVID, which is totally and completely understandable. What was interesting is that the Waterbury Rail Line maintained 40% ridership, which we thought was really interesting. And the reason is, is because there's, there's so many people traveling to and from New York City here in the city of Waterbury and the region each and every day. But actually, because of COVID, it's been amazing to see the influx of New York City residents who have moved into the city of Waterbury over the last year. As a matter of fact, Waterbury was number one in home sales in the state of Connecticut in January. And it's amazing to see these families relocating here. With, and, and talking with the realtors, one of the main reasons that the people from New York City are, are coming to Waterbury is affordability, good schools, access to the rail line. 
something and uh, with the support of the state of Connecticut, $116 million was committed to enhance service reliability, modernize and upgrade rail infrastructure and in preparation for a time when additional rail cars could be added to increase service. I'd like to applaud Governor Lamont for including $1.2 million in his 2022-23 biennial budget proposal to increase the number of trains servicing the Waterbury branch line as Lieutenant Governor pointed out from 15 cars to 22 cars each weekday allowing for more service during peak and non-peak hours. The governor's biennium budget puts forth proposals that will generate real revenues required to stabilize the trans state transportation fund. Everyone at this press conference recognizes that additional funding for the Waterbury rail line is what will secure the future health and vitality of the Naugatuck Valley and the broader region. It's imperative that our state legislators work together in a bipartisan fashion to support the governor's biennium budget. Our residents are counting on us to deliver this funding and the economic quality and of life benefits that additional rail service will bring to our region. So my ask is simple from all you great legislators. Please, 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 let's get done. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Mayor O'Leary. It is now my great pleasure to introduce our Transportation Commissioner, Joe Gilletti. Well, first, let me start with a thank you to the mayor who's constantly been calling to make sure that he keeps me on point. He <laughs> reinforces what the governor has said from day number one, which is that he wanted faster service and more service because he recognized the value of public transportation. So to the governor and the lieutenant governor, to the transportation committee, co-chairs, and the members of the Waterbury and Naugatuck Valley delegation, the commuter rail council, who's also here, Metro North, and especially the DOT team who have been working on this. We're here to celebrate a lot of work that has gone into improving the Waterbury line from the station area upgrades that we're standing on, the 116 million in capital improvement works last year, including signals, track work, and bridge repair, and the fact that the last time I was here, this was a dirt lot, okay, and, and how much has changed to make it where it is today and what we're looking forward to. And while we've accomplished a lot, we have a lot more work to do to expand and improve rail service and transportation in the region. And we're going to do that. And the next year, we're going to take on even more of the work that has to be done on this line going forward. And part of the work is gearing up for additional service on the Waterbury line, which, thanks to the governor's budget, includes funding those additional seven more trains per day on the Waterbury line. The great news and very much welcomed, but on the other end of it, I have to make it clear. Without the new funding streams proposed by the governor, without TCI and the highway use tax on heavy trucks, without any mechanism to fund transportation in our state as we know it, we cannot plan for the future and we cannot deliver the transportation system. The Waterbury, Naugatuck Valley, and the rest of the Connecticut deserves and expects this from our state. So without HUT revenue, the DOT will not be able to purchase six new rail cars for the Waterbury line. And without TCI, the DOT will not be able to modernize and enhance transportation, like reducing congestion at signal lights and intersections and electrifying public transit buses in Nebraska City and beyond. So I want to applaud and thank the governor and his team and our elected leaders for their commitment to rail and innovative transportation solutions in the region and state. And I'm hopeful and optimistic that we'll be back here next year celebrating the launch of a new and expanded service in the Waterbury Line and hopefully the new cars coming in as well. Thank you. Commissioner Gilletti, thank you so much. I'd now like to introduce our DEEP Commissioner, Katie Dyke. Thank you so much, Lieutenant Governor. It's great to be here today. And I think uh, you've heard about what uh, these investments in expanding rail and electrifying our transit buses, providing for more and frequent and more convenient transit service can mean for good jobs, for economic development, for the thriving of this community here in Waterbury and across the state. What I want you to take away is that these solutions are also things that are helping us fight climate change and provide for cleaner air for our kids and for families and investing in our generations to come. 
These are solutions that are driving, uh, are helping to us to address environmental justice and racial inequality in our public health uh, environment in our state. And this is how. The Transportation Climate Initiative will, for the first time, enable us to get the oil industry to take responsibility for the pollution that's caused by combusting gasoline and diesel fuels, and will help drive a billion dollars of investment for our state to put to work in clean transportation solutions that will reduce emissions, help us switch over to electric vehicles, and provide for these kinds of transit opportunities that are going to transform our economy. We know the transportation system is, we have to tackle it if we're going to solve our climate crisis. 40% of greenhouse gas emissions are coming from our transportation sector, from burning uh, fossil fuels in our internal combustion engines, in vehicle traffic, cars and buses on the road. And these same vehicles are also contributing 67% of the air pollution generated in our state. We can't meet the goals that we need to, that we have to, to provide for a better future for our kids unless we have the tools like the Transportation Climate Initiative to put the investments to work, put the dollars to work that will help us clean up our air. This, these solutions are, are available to us today and, and I want every parent um, who has had to, you know, uh, run after your kid and make sure that they remember their inhaler, who's had to spend the night in an emergency room with your child and had to call in to work, call off work because of childhood asthma. You need to know what's at stake right now, is if we can act and get the authority from the legislature to be part of this program, it's going to make the difference in having more accessible transit, having cleaner vehicles, and having happier, healthier kids. Um, right here in Waterbury, uh, the air quality, we monitor the air quality here with ambient air monitors uh, that we have for DEEP. The air quality here is 17% worse than in our suburban communities. It's 44% worse than in our rural communities in this state. And so this is an environmental justice issue and an opportunity as well. With the Transportation Climate Initiative, we are making a commitment to spend a minimum of these 35% of that billion dollar investment in communities like this, employing people and putting solutions to work that can help address communities who have been overburdened by air pollution for too long. And we're excited that if we act now, um, you know, Connecticut's always been a, a leader on addressing climate change, but taking this leadership step right now in this session, this year, we will mean that other states will move with us Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Washington, D.C., they've told us if we do this now, they will join with us. And so that together, these states uh, will be able to help us address more and more reductions of carbon emissions from our transportation sector. It's going to mean a huge difference uh, for communities across the state. But we have to act now, and so I really appreciate the leadership of, of so many in the, in the General Assembly who are here with us today, who recognize what's at stake um, and what this can mean for our communities. And so really excited to highlight this vision and be part of this discussion today. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner, thank you so much. So we're very honored to have so many legislative leaders here with us today. Um, I do want to say thank you to Senator Will Haskell and Representative Roland Lamar. They are conducting uh, a hearing right now, so they are not here. But we do have Senator Joan Hartley, Representative Jerry Reyes, Representative Rosa Rambimbas, Representative D.G. M. Carlo, uh, Representative Ron Napoli, Senator George Cabrera, Representative Joe Paletta, Representative Kara Rochelle, Representative Mary Wielander. Did I forget anybody? All right. Who? Leslie Representative Leslie Zupkus. All right. So we think this is, they are a very important group. What I'm going to do is I'm going to invite Senator Joan Hartley, Representative Jerry Reyes, and Representative Rosa Rambimbas up to say a few words. They are the chairs of the Waterbury Rail Caucus. So we're going to invite them up and then any other legislator who would like to say something, they are welcome. Well, 
Um, good afternoon, all, and it's uh, a real cast of stars today, and rightfully so, talking about um, this incredible opportunity. I, I first of all want to um, thank and recognize Governor Lamont and Lieutenant Governor Bysowitz, who um, have been frequent flyers to Waterbury. They are here um, on numerous occasions. They've been at our health care facilities, our schools, um, uh, frequently at our Chamber of Commerce events, uh, always available and accessible to answer all the questions, easy and hard. So thank you, thank you for that. Um, and uh, to um, our Mayor, uh, Mayor O'Leary, uh, who has just been an incredible visionary, and yes, it is true, Mayor O'Leary, that I think it was the first couple of days of your first administration that our first press conference was right here, and yes, uh, Commissioner Giletti, it was a dirt lot, um, <laughs> amongst other things. So, you know, I'm loving the benches, I'm, the bump outs, um, the, the, the platforms and so forth. There's been great investment here um, at this station, appropriately so. Fifth largest city of the state of Connecticut at the intersection of two major interstates. Um, and what are we talking about here? And by the way, uh, thank you very much, um, Governor Lamont, because uh, we just, in the subcommittee um, for transportation, fresh out of the box, gave a nod to your recommendations, and, um, and now we're having some quality time with Commissioner um, Dyke's <laughs> budget. I just left it. <laughs> um, all good quality time, trust me. Um, but it, what we're talking about here is something simple, two-way train service. Hello, you can go north and you can go south. Um, and yes, effectively, that doubles our capacity. And what are we talking about? We're talking about a corridor with approximately a quarter of a million people uh, from Waterbury down to Bridgeport. It's uh, the number of jobs, I've seen various numbers, uh, 1,500, 2,000, um, and to uh, your point, Mayor, yes, we have seen this incredible influx of uh, families, individuals from the metropolitan area. The only other transportation corridor we're talking about is not an interstate highway along this route. It's Route 8, and Route 8 is lovely. It's scenic. It's real curvy. Um, it's never going to be an intersection. So that makes it even more important uh, for this transit rail corridor. So um, I just can't thank Governor Lamont enough for his recognition and his initiative on this. Um, it is going to unlock so much potential, uh, undeveloped land, the brownfields along this area. Uh, the potential is uh, just amazing. So I, I have to thank my colleagues who have, you know, been in lockstep with me, the, uh, the rail caucus, um, the Waterbury caucus, um, everybody has, you know, been very passionate and worked so hard, um, and it's really all about that collective effort. So thank you so much um, to this administration. Um, you lead in many ways. Thank you. Thank you again for being here. I don't think we can say it enough. It's such an honor to see finally our vision carry through, through the grace of the good work of the governor and the lieutenant governor and our commissioners and our town leaders. I just want to thank also the public, the Waterbury Rail Line, which I sometimes refer to it as the backbone to Joan Hartley's great work over all of the many years truly was a caucus that worked together in joining town leaders, state leaders, the public, engaging everyone, including the media, because we can't get the word out if it wasn't for the media as well. I can't tell you what a collaborative effort this has been, and it truly is the people's issue. This regional project is going to have such a positive economic impact on the state as a whole. We are talking about individuals, and we saw it in during the pandemic, the ridership. These are individuals who rely on transportation. They need it. They need to get to work. 
we hope this is going to increase to have our youth get to a variety of different school choices, visit family, and ultimately entertainment. So when we talk about people having to go down to Fairfield County to park in order to get the train, go to New York City, no longer. Waterbury and all the towns up the rail line. This is so important for convenience, but also the ability to get to work, to get to an education. We must keep that in mind. This truly is an investment. And again, I do thank our government leaders, the governor, the lieutenant governor, the commissioners, and all of the local leaders that fought so hard to make this possible. And I also want to acknowledge that this is a bipartisan and all of the representatives that are here. If I were to tell you and start naming off all of the text messages of the state representatives and senators who wanted to be here, but because of other committee meetings and other uh, uh, meetings that they had and couldn't be here, I probably would keep you here for hours. But this truly has been a bipartisan effort and support like no other at the state capitol. And I just want to thank all of them for their continued support. So may we continue to see our vision come through. and. Merrill Larry and Governor, I believe the request was made by the mayor, but I can assure you, we are in partnership with you. We are here. We look forward to future discussions in any way that we can continue to make this vision statewide. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Geraldo Reyes, State Representative, 75th District. What an honor and privilege to be here. Welcome to the 75th District, to the western part of the 75th District here. I am so excited and honored to be here. This train station that we've been talking about for a long, long time, especially with my good friend Joan Hartley here, it, it's been a long time in coming. And uh, I want to thank the Waterbury Rail Caucus, the leadership of the state of Connecticut, Mayor O'Leary. I don't want to leave out Mayor Hess. He says there's gold in those valleys. Let's, let's go dig out that gold for him. He's been saying that for a while. And, and you know, our president, Joe Biden, shortly after he was elected, said he was going to put environmental justice in everything that they did in Washington. Our governor, Governor Lamont, said the very same thing to me last year, and he, and he backed his word when he helped get environmental justice uh, work across the goal line and into law. The Black and Puerto Rican Caucus has eight pillars. This renovation, this rehabilitation of this tra uh, train station addresses four of them. The ridership that, that was being utilized through here was for, by essential workers that needed to go to work somewhere in this state and continue to ride this train, even when ridership was down throughout the rest of the state. I can't thank the Waterbury Rail uh, leadership, the Waterbury Rail Caucus, for the work that they've done. And this is just the start of a great, great transportation project for all the reasons that my colleagues already spoke. We look south. We should also be looking north. And when, while we're looking north, I want to make sure that everybody remembers this little building right here. We want to continue this little project right here. And uh, that's going to be hopefully something that we're addressing very shortly. So thank you very much for coming. Governor Lamont, Commissioner, Lieutenant Governor, and Mayor O'Leary, continue success. Thank you. Hey, and I do want to acknowledge uh, Paul Panaruski, the leader of the Waterbury Board of Aldermen. All right, we so appreciate all of our legislators. Anyone else? Now's your opportunity if you'd like to say a few words. Anybody else? Going once? All right, well, then I would like to call on Jim Gildea, the chairman of the Connecticut Commuter Rail Council. Good afternoon, everybody. So I am chairman of the Connecticut Commuter Rail Council. But I think more importantly than that, I'm a 10-year commuter on the Waterbury branch who's been in the trenches, who drives the train, who gets on in Derby, gets off in Bridgeport, and then makes his way. And I became a, a commuter uh, 10 years ago when Fairfield Metro opened up right next door to where I work at Bigelow T. And I thought to myself, wow, this is going to be pretty cool, rail commuting. And then I said, wow, there's a 6 o'clock train home and an 8.30 train home. Maybe it's not as cool as I thought. Uh, and so, uh, actually, truth be told, that's why I got involved in the council. Uh, and as a daily commuter in the trench for the last 10 years, you know, I've seen, some, you know, I've seen some of the rough days, right? I've seen the loss of the express train. I've seen a 70% on-time percentage rate. I've seen busing substitutions because of service issues and, and lack of holiday time. So I think I have real credibility 
when I tell you how exciting this is and how amazing this is and how for the Waterbury Branch commuter, this is what we've dreamed about and thought about. To be able to have seven more trains a day is a game changer. To tell the commuter that they have more opportunities to go to work, go to school, go to the places they want to they visit is simply amazing. And so I think the, the, the mayor you know, mentioned it certainly extremely well. The Waterbury Branch line leads the state of Connecticut, all the branches, and then some by a wide margin in returning ridership. So this is an amazing day, and on behalf of the Waterbury Branch commuters, I would like to thank the governor for his vision and his commitment, and we are very grateful. Thank you. All right. Thank you to all our speakers. And now we would invite questions from the media and all of our very distinguished. I'll jump in for one second. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's mark that down. There's a first for everything. The first time I forgot to introduce our amazing, incredible, awesome governor, Ned Lamont. Yeah. Keep going, Susan. Keep digging. Keep digging. <laughs> hey, look, Senator Hartley said that uh, Susan and I are frequent flyers to Waterbury, and that's because the rail is too damn slow. We got to speed it up. We got to make it more frequent, and that's what we mean to do. And uh, my great friend Neil O'Leary. I mean, every time I'm here, he reminds me that uh, Waterbury is happening. You see it in terms of everybody rediscovering the number of people moving here, what that means in terms of real estate. Uh, most of these folks coming from New York, and that's true of the entire valley, gold in them there hills, isn't that what you said, Jerry? And that's why this entire valley, we open it up with two-way rail service and what that means. We've discovered over this last uh, year, miserable as it may have been, that um, a lot of people realize Connecticut's an amazing place to be, and we love the lifestyle. We love that in Waterbury I can afford a house and my schools are open and um, I can get outside and I can be safe. And, uh, but we got to make it easier for you to get to and from. You know, maybe you don't have to be in New York City or Stanford every day, but maybe you'd like to be able to get there easier uh, once or twice a week. And that's why this uh, rail service is so incredibly important to the future development of everything we're trying to do here in this whole part of the state. And I really appreciate your help in getting this uh, across the finish line. Um, Rose, I appreciate what you said about this is bipartisan. This is an initiative where we can make uh, an enormous difference together. Um, look, we got the highway user fee. We got TCI. We can talk about that. But you've got to remember, like, I, I love steak and fries, but there's no such thing as a free lunch. And we do have to find a way to pay for it. Uh, I think TCI and the highway user fee makes an enormous difference. Uh, we're doing that, as um, Katie said, in association with our fellow governors. Uh, and what the TCI also means is it's going to give a little more incentive to um, get money for rail, get cars off the roads and trucks off the road, and move towards a, a le electrification of our services going forward. And as I've learned in this last year, um, you know, comorbidities is not necessarily a word I had at the top of my mind a year ago. And um, now we've realized with, um, with COVID uh, what it means. And uh, as Jerry and Katie said, one of the toughest comorbidities is asthma. And uh, that's triggered um, a lot of the worst of the COVID-related complications. And a lot of that is uh, this, the basic health inequities we have. A lot of that's related to race. And if we can do a little bit as a state and take the lead in our region and take the lead as a country to do what we can to reduce asthma, reduce all those particulates, especially for those kids that live in and around a major thoroughfares. I think we've done it a really important thing. And we've done it alongside economic development and doing everything we can to make Waterbury keep happening, Mayor. Keep happening. Thanks, everybody. Okay, and now that we just had our most important speaker, we'll take questions. It is. I'd really say, I think these, um, you know, racial disparities or healthcare disparities, they are part of a public health emergency, absolutely. You know, Jerry reminds me all the time, and we see it in the numbers that uh, black and brown people are particularly hard hit, 
as we were saying, often due to comorbidities. And uh, that's why, look, I can tell you, Waterbury has been an incredible leader. I want to thank each and every one of you in terms of making sure we get vaccinations out to people, take the vaccinations where the people are, what a difference that makes. And um, I got to say one thing. I see some of the folks from uh, transportation here. I just forgot. I mean, Joe Biden likes to call himself uh, Amtrak. Uh, Joe, and um, we got Waterbury Rail Joe right over here. The question was about um, vaccine passports or vaccine um, validation that show that you've been vaccinated. I'd love to hear other people's point of view on this. I've had a number of conversations with folks in the White House about this. Um, you maybe know that the first Carnival Cruise Line is taking off, I think, this week, but you have to show that you have been vaccinated. And I think you remember how those cruise lines were particularly hard hit a year ago. And my instinct is, look, we're not going to be doing anything about that uh, for the near term. It's not fair. Not everybody has access to the vaccine yet. But my hunch is this summer when some people are a little more reluctant to get vaccinated, yeah, you might see restaurants say, um, you know, I was growing up, they had a smoking and a non-smoking section. Maybe there'll be a vaccinated and a non-vaccinated section. You decide where you want to sit. Uh, the question was, uh, if somebody chooses not to get vaccinated, would that be discriminatory? Look, I don't think I have to get into that right now. Right now, I have uh, extraordinary demand for people who want to get vaccinated and a shortage of supply. But you're right, within a month or so, uh, that could shift. And I still need you to urge each and every one of your friends, get vaccinated. It's important for you, and it's also important for all the people you come into contact with. So right now, let me do everything I can on a voluntary basis to urge you and to, you to urge your friends to get vaccinated. Do you want to add to that, anybody? Guess not. Uh, you maybe heard that um, the Vice President of the United States, Kamala Harris, is going to be coming to uh, New Haven for sure um, on Friday. And uh, I think uh, she's coming for a variety of reasons, but the biggest is that uh, Rosa DeLauro has been a champion for childcare and daycare for an awful long time. And this, um, the rescue plan provides significant resources for childcare and daycare. And I think that's part of what she wants to celebrate and come up with what are we gonna do to make this money meaningful? I mean, I'm just shocked that we have fewer people Fewer women in the workforce today. It's the lowest uh, level of participation in 30 years, and a lot of that is related to uh, childcare and daycare. So, we're going to be there to talk about some big ideas that make uh, daycare broadly available to everybody. It's great for the kids and helps those single parents get back to work. Uh, my hunch is she's going to also be talking about how important um, the rescue plan was. And um, what's that? Hey, good timing. There you go. Right on schedule. <laughs> hey, speed it up, will you? <laughs> I think she's going to be taking a, um, a lap about what that uh, plan means for, uh, in this case, the state of Connecticut. It's going to mean enormous resources for Waterbury. It's going to mean enormous resources for getting our kids back to school and back in the game. And at the end of this school year, maybe day camp and summer camp so that kids can start interfacing with each other again, relax, start getting ready to learn so that in September we hit the ground running. That's what it means. I, I couldn't hear you. I used to think that was really noisy, now it's the sound of progress. <laughs> The question is, how does TCI connect to the budget plan? Um, as you know, um, you know, gasoline tax revenues are not on the upswing, they're on the downswing. Uh, we have some significant investments we need to make, and I need TCI and the highway user uh, fee, same as they got right in New York, as ways that we can pay our uh, fair share. And I'm really hopeful that um, Mayor Pete and uh, 
the elected leaders down in Washington are come up with an infrastructure plan, but it's not free money, it's not a grant. It's sort of 80-20 or 90-10, and they're going to say, Connecticut, you have a way to pay for your share of this. That's how we can do a lot more Waterbury rail lines. Anybody else? Thanks, everyone, for coming. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Governor. Thanks. I got your thing. I don't know if I can put it on, but I will.